Buchanan, Anoustakio in midfield, Buchanan, Hoylett, Laria, Nottingham Forest player, who's currently on loan at Toronto FC, and Jonathan David, the highly rated Jonathan David up front. So this is Belgium, Canada in Group F, and the match begins, and the ball is immediately played back to, to goalkeeper Boyan to our right, the Canadian side in the white shirts with the red numbers and Belgium in these uh, rather vivid red shirts with the black sleeves, black shorts and black and red socks. So this is the fourth and final commentary today from here in the Gulf at this World Cup and it is the star-studded Belgians, the team ranked number two in the world. Once again here they are setting out an attempt to win what would be Belgium's first major senior tournament title and it is the Canadians in possession inside their own half, but that's a poor pass. It's given away to Batshuayi, and Batshuayi shoots for goal, and it's deflected, but it's deflected relatively close to Boyan, the goalkeeper, who's able to drop down to his left and hold on to it. I don't know whether that was nerves or, or what it was, Dion Dublin, but it wasn't very good from No, Canada. it wasn't, and you can't make those kind, of mistake, uh, those kind of mistakes at all, not this early in the game anyway, against a team like Belgium. You cannot. Here's Junior Hoylet now on the left-hand side. Junior Hoylet now of Reading, taking the ball under the full-back position, crossing to the near post, and it is cleared away he's looking for Jonathan David in the middle but they have it back Alfonso Davis Alfonso Davis real quality there with the number 19 on his back cuts in field he's on his right foot little ball towards the edge of the area David turns it out towards the right hand side and now uh, on the overlap Johnston tries to get the cross in that is blocked by Carrasco it bounces back to Alistair Johnson the right back and uh, Canada this is much better from them into the penalty area they go and now the chance for the shot which is is hit well enough by Eustachio, the Porto man, the midfielder inside the box, but it was blocked at source, just a couple of yards away, the Belgian defender, and they were able to get it away. So there we are, in the first two minutes, Canada, very, very bad at the back, but actually pretty good at the front. Yeah, sharp, moving it about. From the left-hand side over to the right-hand side, two players combining well, a little one-two as well. Last-ditch defence from Belgium, bet they weren't expecting that in the first five minutes. No, I bet they weren't. So, uh, great day this for Canada making only their second appearance at a World Cup and uh, their English coach John Herdman down there a Newcastle United supporter from County Durham and uh, is that looked like a, was that a late challenge on Fatonga? the ball had already gone and it was it was late from uh, Buchanan the midfielder but I think Fatonga will be okay Dion yeah he'll be fine just a bit of a, a body check there just caught him while his weight uh, wasn't on his uh, his right foot knocked him over, he's fine. I was watching actually the warm-up before the game started and uh, Michi Batshuayi looks very, very sharp. He put a few shots in the top corners as well, so he is wanting to get on the score sheet as all good centre-forwards will want to, but uh, he's looking sharp, I feel, for this defence tonight. Yeah, so it is nil-nil, very early stages. Batshuayi in, in very decent goal-scoring form for Fenerbahce, eight goals this season, but Canada have won the ball back and it's played out towards the right-hand side. Buchanan is there, double step over from Buchanan up against Carrasco, chosen by Roberto Martinez as the left wing back. There was some debate over who that would be, but it's Carrasco who got the nod and he's been able to concede a throw in on the far side. So Alistair Johnson, this uh, well thought of right back, blonde haired, short blonde hair, takes the throw, but that's a, a poor touch actually from Hutchinson and the ball is out of play for a throw in to Belgium. So yes, Tonight in Doha, Canada become only the second team from their country to play at a Men's World Cup. And they have the chance tonight to become the first Canadian team to actually score a goal at the World Cup and to win a point at the World Cup. And it is Belgium clearing the ball away with Fatongan, who is OK. Alderweireld it bounces to. Left-footed clearance from him on the edge of the box. And then there's a foul on the halfway line by Batshuayi, who is putting it about a bit. Quite a physical challenge. Batshuayi sort of turns and points to his own chest, as if to say to the referee, what? A foul? <laughs> yeah, he sort of... I think he caught uh, Vittoria there. Didn't even know he was there, to be honest. Just turned, he was there, and he just caught his, caught his shoulder, knocked him over, referee pulled it back for a free kick. Uh, the referee, by the way, is uh, Yanni Zikazwi of Zambia, who you might remember from the Africa Cup of Nations earlier this year. This was the referee who twice blew the final whistle early 
during the Tunisia Mali match during the uh, the Cup of Nations. Uh, first in the 86th minute, realised his mistake, uh, then said carry on, and then actually blew the final whistle uh, on 89 minutes and 47 seconds when Mali were leading 1-0. It caused quite a fuss at the time, and when I saw that he was refereeing this game, I have to say I was slightly surprised. But uh, clearly, FIFA have confidence in him, otherwise he wouldn't be here. And everyone makes mistakes, even though that was quite a big one. <laughs> have you made a mistake? I've never seen yeah, you made a mistake. Yeah, Dion make mistakes every day. <laughs> Belgium nil, Canada nil. Uh, Vittoria playing the ball back to goalkeeper Boyan, who uh, passes it out from the back and then uh, the ball is deflected by Carrasco out of play for a throw-in to Canada. Actually, the, the officials tonight is very, very much um, a, a League of Nations affair in that the referee is from Zambia, the assistants are from Colombia and Algeria, the fourth officials from Japan and the uh, VAR, the uh, main VAR official is from Venezuela. So. They're hoping, I think, for international understanding between the officials tonight. Here it is with Belgium playing it forward towards the edge of the box. That's headed away by Johnston. It bounces down now for Carrasco, and Carrasco turns, but in comes the challenge on him. Good one as well, it was, to uh, win it back for Canada from Mustachio, and then Carrasco tries to win it back, but fails and falls on his backside. And now Buchanan on the right-hand side, and his cross into the middle is actually deflected wide by Junior Hoylett. Fire a deflection, and it is a corner to Canada. But good Buchanan, Buchanan's done well. You're right, actually, Dion. It was David, wasn't it's it? Jonathan David chance. in the middle. It's a good chance, by the way. Jonathan David there, just getting across. Then Donk at the near post, just trying to anticipate getting to that ball first. Doesn't quite connect. They get there at the same time. That's a good chance, a really good chance. They're not sitting back. They're not waiting for Belgium at all. So it's uh, a corner from the right-hand side. Junior Hoylett to take this. Raises both arms. Steps away. Three, four, five strides. First big set-piece chance for Canada. Nil-nil on five live. Hoylett waits. And now here is the delivery with a corner. It's a deep one towards the penalty spot. It's taken down and shot. Goldman's and deflected, but took the pace off it. The shot that was, was hit well by Buchanan, who's already caught the eye. But it took the pace off it, and Courtois in the Belgian goal just had to make a couple of steps to his left to catch yeah, the ball. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was more or less on the penalty spot, two yards from the penalty spot. And he just turns, takes a touch, smacks it through about three players. It took about two deflections. Courtois has gone left, he's gone right, and just by chance, the ball went to him. Oh, hang on. The referee has stopped play and said that VAR is checking for a possible penalty, a potential handball. Now, I'm not sure about, in fact, the referee, Ooh. the referee has very quickly drawn the rectangle in the air and has been called across to have a look at the screen. So I'm guessing, we've not seen the pictures yet, I'm guessing that that is Buchanan's shot that must have struck the arm, possibly an outstretched arm, maybe an arm above the head of a Belgian defender. And we're seeing it now. And Carrasco's arm is... is uh, is out in front of his body and it comes it off his wrist it is it is and you know what it's actually it's a, it's a good strike it's going goal bound as well yeah and it has hit his left left wrist it's going into the uh, right hand side of Courtois goal it hits his hand it is going goalwards I think they're Ooh. quite I think they're quite, they're quite strong I think Juan Soto of Venezuela is quite clear he believes it's a penalty and yes there we are there is the decision Canada have been awarded an early penalty the video assistant referee has stepped in. I think Carrasco is going to be shown a yellow card as well for that. I'm not sure he knew a great deal about it, in all honesty, but he is yellow carded for it. And uh, it was goal bound. And uh, I think Jonathan David has already got the ball on the spot. He's not going to waste any time here at all. So Canada, what an opportunity this is in the 10th minute. In fact, for Canada, it's Alfonso Davis who has got the ball and he's put it on the spot. What a moment this is. Here in Doha in 2022, Canada have a golden opportunity here to score their first goal at a World Cup. But Alfonso Davis of Bayern Munich has to beat Thibaut Courtois of Real Madrid. This is a heavyweight penalty contest. 
Alfonso Davis with his left foot has his eyes on the ball. Total concentration. The stadium almost quiet as it waits for this huge moment. A chance for Canada to take the lead against Belgium. Still he waits. And now up he steps, left footed, and it's saved by Courtois, and it comes back to Davis, and he was impeded, there was a teammate going for the same ball, and he's hooked the follow up high and wide, and the chance has gone for Canada, the chance has gone for Alfonso Davis, and Thibaut Courtois, man of the match in the Champions League final, remember, saves from the penalty, saves from the penalty spot, down to his right, pushing it away, and it's a goal kick to Belgium. It's Dion a poor Dublin. penalty. It's a really poor penalty. I mean, I've taken a few penalties as well, not at this level, but when you put the ball down so early and you're waiting and you're stood, you can have so many thoughts going in your head. I'd like to have the ball in my hand. I'd like to wait till the last minute and prepare properly. Really poor penalty. We know how good Thibaut Courtois is at penalty saves. And it's a really, really bad one. It's not even in the corner. He'll be really disappointed with that. No venom, no direction, nothing at all. Such a disappointment for Canada. Can you imagine them? All over that great, that huge country. Televisions, radios, tablets, you name it, devices. What a start that would have been for them. What a start. All tuned into the stadium here. The uh, Ahmed bin Ali Stadium. And such disappointment. Here's Jonathan David though. Canada bright coming forward. Buchanan is challenged and then uh, it bounces to Witzel on the edge of the box and Belgium have got it back. What a disappointment for Canada. What a let off for Belgium. Yeah, it is a let off actually. Belgium is, you know, they're actually just looking around at each other now. Witzel's looking around, looking at Tielemans and as if to say, well, let's just get the ball down. Let's just play for a bit. Get hold of the ball. Let's not force things. And and Canada are on the front foot. They've had most of the ball as well in Belgium's final third. Yep, look really sharp coming forward. And here they are on the right-hand side with Buchanan again, who's seen a lot of the ball in the early stages. And uh, he wins a throw in off Carrasco. So this is Tejon Buchanan, who plays for Club Bruges, who are one of the teams of the season with what they've been able to do in the Champions League. And they've taken the throw quickly. And the uh, shot is dragged wide from uh, over on the, on the right-hand side, Laria it is who just snatched it rather the the nottingham forest man as he is he's on loan as i say in canada and uh, it is a goal kick to uh, belgium no, yeah, no. They, they seem to be getting in in those sort of pockets in front of uh, the back three of belgium very easy turning and then picking a few one twos between each other yes they are and here's hutchinson now the shaven headed hutchinson 39 years old to Hoylett on the left, deep cross to the back post, Buchanan nods it across, it's come out, David pulls it onto his left foot, shoots, but that's blocked, and Belgium should get it away, but it's been given away, and now David with another chance, there might be another penalty in there, you know, although the offside flag is up, and, and the Canadian players, I think, are going to the referee and saying, how about that for another penalty, but I think the flag had already gone up before the challenge came in, on Jonathan David, yes it had, and it would have been, it would, for Tongan took the legs of Jonathan David, but he'd already received the that ball in an offside that, position. We're looking at the replays here on our screens, that would have definitely been a penalty if the offside flag hadn't been raised. There was a, a moment there when I'll, I think it was Jonathan David swung with his left foot, he was about 12 yards out, it was going goalwards when he struck it, but if he'd just laid it to his left, Hutchinson was there on the penalty spot. Free strike at goal. They're the decisions you have to make. The correct decisions if you're going to give yourself a chance to score a goal against a team like these. Belgium nil, Canada nil. That's Dion Dublin with us. Of course, of course, it's Dion Dublin. And uh, this match is also available tonight, by the way, on World Cup Extra on your BBC iPlayer, i.e. If you'd like to listen to this match with the five live commentary, but also have it synced in with the pictures. It's very clever, this. But uh, we can do it for any match that is live from this World Cup on BBC television. And this one is Steve Wilson and Jermaine Genus are just about, what, 15 yards over to our left in their commentary position. So they're doing the commentary on the TV. But if you like, for a bit of variety to, to have the uh, radio commentary with your TV pictures, just like your grandfather used to do, then uh, you can do it in 2022.
<laughs> on uh, the iPlayer World Cup Extra and the various other things on there as well. I think extra, uh, extra entertainment. Belgium nil, Canada nil. And Belgium have creaked. That was quite a creaky piece of defending actually by Fertongen, who is now 35 years old. There's some, there's some elderly, oh, oh, elderly. There's some older gentlemen out there on the pitch this <laughs> evening, aren't there? But talking about elderly, 35, yes. And Boyan, the goalkeeper, 35. But no one's older than Atiba Hutchinson, 39 years old, who sets a record tonight as the second oldest outfield player at a World Cup. The only outfield player older than Atiba Hutchinson is the famous Roger Miller, who played in the World Cup for Cameroon at 42. As the ball is played forward for Junior Hoylett, who chests it across the penalty area. David is in the middle. Hoylett is bright, shoots across goal, but wide at the far post from the far side of the penalty area. A low shot skidded across the turf and beyond the far post. You know, it's a really good ball, you know. A really, really good one. It's just fed into that left-hand channel, down Belgium's left, down Canada's right. It's fed from there in towards Junior Hoylett. He gets in between uh, the Tongan who was, I don't know who it was at the, at the back there at the time, but he gets in, in, in between Vertonghen and Alderweireld. And it's so easy. One ball just cuts out three defenders. They're just not switched on at the moment, Belgium. They're not. Belgium nil, Canada nil. And we heard from our friend Christophe Terreur, part of the Five Live EuroLeague show before the, uh, before the match. He was telling me, he says, the problem is Belgium haven't played well for a year together. It's real concerns over this brilliant record for such a long time under Roberto Martinez world ranked number one for such a long time but they lost that position to Brazil here earlier this year but now here they are coming forward but we've seen nothing of them in an attacking sense and I don't think I've said Kevin De Bruyne's name yet since the start of the match no I don't think he's had many touches he's trying to get on the ball but he's kind of being man marked in the middle of the park one in front one behind every every time he a Belgian player looks up to try and find him. He'll find he'll find his feet, he'll find the, the pace of the game. He usually does. Hazard is fouled centre field. Alistair Johnston put in the challenge. Boos from the ca Canadian supporters. But it's a free kick to Belgium, five or six yards inside the Canadian half. And they're in they're in Canadian's half. I don't know how many times they've been in this half. Not many. We've seen all the action in Belgium's final third because Canada have been so good in this opening few minutes. So a free kick to Belgium. Yes, they lost to Egypt in Q8 in their final warm-up match last week, as we were hearing earlier. So that means they've now lost six of their last 17 internationals, Belgium. Most unlike them, having lost only four of the first 60 under Roberto Martinez's management. Ball in from the right-hand side from Tielemans. Of course, this team is absolutely littered with players who either play or have played in the Premier League. Eight, eight of this starting lineup that applies to. And uh, we have six of this Belgium team that are playing at their fifth tournament, either World Cup or European Championships. A great, great experience. As the ball goes back to Courtois, Thibaut Courtois, he's got 98 caps now. Should make it to 100, all being well at the tournament. And now here is Kevin De Bruyne for the first time receiving the ball in the centre circle and carrying it forward, but over hitting the pass through for Carrasco. And goalkeeper Boyan can take three or four big steps forward and just picks the ball up as if it was a back pass from Kevin De Bruyne. Yeah, he was striding past the ageing Hutchinson. He left him for dead for pace. He was going straight towards the middle of the D and he picked the wrong pass. Tielemans was far, flying down his right shoulder. He just didn't lift his head. Kevin De Bruyne, I can't believe I'm saying it, but he, pay, he made the wrong choice. Belgium nil, Canada nil. Five Live and BBC Sounds for this uh, fourth match of the day. First time I've covered one of what is here in Qatar, one of the 10 o'clock kickoffs. So it's going to be a late finish tonight by the time we get back onto the, the road into Doha. And, uh, and visit the petrol station as well, which we have to do on the way back. <laughs> yes, we do. Yes, we I know, I know, I know the way out of the stadium. I've been here before, don't worry about it. <laughs> here, the ball on the right-hand side with, uh, with Belgium inside their own half. Castagna of Leicester City, of course, up towards Batshuayi. And then Witzel chests the ball down and gives it on the halfway line to the captain, Aidan Hazard, who crouches low and chests it down and then sets off on one of his weaving runs and is upended by Buchanan. So it's a free kick again to Belgium near the centre circle. Yeah, I think when you watch um, Hazard play, Eden Hazard play, if you if you ever watch him play and he plays the ball forward and follows that ball forward in any of the 
the thirds of it, you can always sense that something's going to happen. When he plays and stays, then you know he's just controlling the game. When he plays and goes forward, he's making something happen there and then. Yeah, one of the uh, the best players at the World Cup four years ago. Got the silver ball as the, the runner-up in the player of the tournament competition to uh, Luka Modric. This tonight for Azad, his 124th appearance for Belgium. And, uh, of course, the issue with him has been his fitness at Real Madrid. Just played six times for Real Madrid this season so far. But fit to captain and start at the first match of the World Cup for Belgium tonight, where it is nil-nil. But Canada have been the better team, at least in an attacking sense. They've really caused problems for Belgium. And the main news so far, the fact that they had a chance to score their first goal at a World Cup. But Alfonso Davis's penalty, poor penalty, Dion, yeah, was, was saved by Courtois. Yeah, it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't a great save, but it's, it's a save he, he expects to make himself. And it's just all the energy that they have. And they're using it well at the moment. They are. The press is good. Whenever the uh, the fullbacks get it, in Belgium, the press is there in three and four players. They're not going on their own. No space for Belgium to play through the lines at all. They're looking frustrated at the moment, Belgium. Nil-nil. 20 minutes played already. So penalty saved. Second night running, I've seen a, a penalty saved. After a Choa kept out Robert Lewandowski last night. Tonight, Courtois makes the save one of the very best goalkeepers as you will no doubt be aware Tielemans is now tripped in the central third Roberto Martinez steps forward to the, right to the uh, white line on the edge of the pitch and feeling that uh, the referee I think the point is is that there have been a number of little fouls on Belgian players in the th central third of the field and that's the latest of them Witzel plays the ball back to the middle man of the three central defenders Toby Alderweireld who uh, turns and gives it out to the left hand side and then it's back to Fatongan now, who is back with Anderlecht now. Toby Alderweireld to his right, now playing for Royal Antwerp, back in his home country. And then from the back, Kamal Miller for Canada overhits that pass. He was looking for Buchanan. So Belgium now move forward with it again. Carrasco with the bleached hair is being impeded. He's being tugged by uh, Laria. So it's a free kick to Belgium inside their own half. But quite well organised, Canada. Looks like everyone knows the job that they're supposed to do. And uh, Belgium begin to come forward again. Here's Leander Dendonka of Aston Villa. Turns and gives it back to Toby Alderweireld. And then a long, long right-footed pass from Alderweireld looking for Aidan Hazard who takes that down brilliantly and gets away from Johnston. And Hazard back to the edge of the area to Tielemans. And Tielemans across to Batshuayi, right side of the area. Puts the shot over the top of the crossbar. He was slipping, he was stretching for it. Kamal Miller, the central defender, slid in as well. And he actually deflected it up and over the top for what is a corner. Yeah, T Tielemans actually lays it into Batshuayi. Tielemans is on the edge of the on, on the edge of the box. He lays it to his right. Batshuayi is there and Batshuayi takes a touch. Doesn't need to take a touch. It's a side foot. It's on the angle about two yards away from the corner of the six-yard box. If he just if he backs himself with a nice strong ankle, I think he's got a chance of scoring there. He takes a touch and the defender nips him. Well defended by Miller. Kamal Miller. So it's a corner, Belgium's first corner, still nil-nil. De Bruyne to take this from way down in front of us. Outswinger towards the penalty spot, but that is headed away by Steven Vittoria. And now Canada look to break through Davis, but there was an important tackle in the middle of there, uh, in the middle of that, and then a long pass forward that Courtois is going to deal with. Out, he clears it, but he gives it away, but Witzel was able to, to head forward the deflection in centre field, and, uh, and Junior Hoylett is able to, uh, in fact, under pressure, he puts it out of play for a throw on the halfway line. John Herdman down there just fields the ball and gives it back for the throw to be taken. John Herdman tonight, another sort of historical line. John Herdman tonight becomes the first person to manage at both the men's and the women's World Cup. What an achievement that is. He, uh, he'll always be able to say that. This man from County Durham, <laughs> mad keen fan of Newcastle United, and now... Uh, then Donka passing it away from the back, Tielemans, that's a lovely pass. And De Bruyne has the run of the pitch, he's got so much space. And now he gives it to the edge of the area to Hazard, and Hazard under pressure, into the penalty area, he's forced very wide. It was Laria coming back and putting the challenge in on him. 
It was quite forceful on the edge of the area, but Hazard stayed on his feet. Yeah, he did. Lauria did really well there. And Johnston shepherded Hazard. Didn't allow him to get his head up to cross the ball or do any little bits of skill. And they forced him uh, back towards his teammate, took a deflection. And that was the, uh, the, the best thing that could have happened. Belgium nil, Canada nil. I don't think there's quite as big an attendance inside the stadium tonight as there was for the Wales match when you were here the other night <laughs> as Belgium win a free kick in centre field. Quite a lot of empty red seats around the place. And I noticed as well, just been shown that, um, that FIFA have put out an updated, an updated stadium capacity list. So okay. goodness knows how, that, what, how that's happened. Long pass from centre field, uh, but Castagna making a burst into the box. There was a defender in front of him and it hit him, the long pass from centre field from Alderweireld and bounced through for a goal kick. So uh, this stadium, the Ahmed bin Ali, which was originally slated as being 40,000 uh, capacity, is now 45,032. <laughs> and, and all of the stadiums have got different attendances. Well, have a, have a closer look at that later. Is that on the BBC Sport website? Is it? No. FIFA have put it out, so you'll find it there. Fascinating. <laughs> Belgium nil, Canada nil, and uh, Alfonso Davis on the left-hand side. An elaborate step over, but it's taken him up towards the edge of the area, and he gets the ball back, and Davis plays it square, but then the uh, a rather slashing shot from the veteran, Hutchinson, the captain, on the edge of the area. That lacked conviction. And it was wide by three or four yards. Yeah, you can see Davis there. He's receiving it on the right, on the left hand side. He, he wants to stay on his left foot, but the Belgian players aren't allowing him to do that. Just shifted it to his uh, to his older teammate, and he slashed it over. But brilliant skill though to get past two two of the Belgian players. I think uh, you know they've already missed a great opportunity tonight from the penalty spot to score their first World Cup goal. But were it to be Atiba Hutchinson to score it? winning his 97th cap tonight you know this this wildly and hugely popular <laughs> footballer wherever he's gone in the world if he'd scored that from the edge of the d for canada's first goal at a world cup i mean that would be fairy tale stuff however maybe maybe he thought about the moment as he was arriving on the ball and he hit it wildly wide and now witzel's been fouled that is another foul by the uh, the midfielder ustakiu of Porto and again Roberto Martinez is pointing to various points on the field as if to say how many how many fouls are going to be allowed on yeah, my players before there's a yellow he's card. He's not happy is he? No he's not. Uh, good physical contact though they don't mind that these Canadian players are really getting close to the Belgian midfield players not allowing Witzel and De Bruyne to lift their heads the not having it their own way at the moment. The other point about Hutchinson Dion is he's been able to play only one match this season because he had a, a bruised bone so he's, he's just played one competitive match this season so you know you can understand him perhaps not looking absolutely tip top as uh, Canada win the ball back deep inside their own half and it is Estacchio who um, is challenged by Witzel and now Davis Davis being forced back by uh, Tielemans and doesn't like the challenge actually looks over his shoulder at Tielemans for for the force of the challenge that he put in on him but back through the goalkeeper Boyan the ball is played out towards the right hand side now in the uh, middle of the field Jonathan David's come rather deep Harry Kane style but passes the ball down the right hand side to Laria and Buchanan's in the middle and Laria takes it on into the box and pulls it back but Castagna came across from the right wing back position and was there to prevent it from reaching Junior Hoylet in the middle and Belgium cleared, still goalless. Five live and BBC Sounds live here at the World Cup in Qatar and Canada coming forward again and Witzel just um, putting the tackle in but uh, ball still live, Laria tries to play it across the penalty area, that's blocked by the defender for Tongan and Belgium get it away down the field. Panic, panic from those five at the back. They're going into a five at the back when they haven't got the ball now. Belgium, they're, they're, they're worried about the movement. They're worried about going down the side with pace. They're worried about Hoyle coming in from the left-hand side and getting across the, the centre-halves. Vitongan, Aldevero, the gaps between them are massive. So they're loving that as well, the Canadian players. And now here's Johnston bringing the ball forward from the right-back position for Canada. And he's still going to the edge of the area. Oh, and he's surely fouled. He's surely brought down on the edge of the penalty area. No, the referee allows play to continue. Then Johnston gets up and shoots, and it's saved by Courtois. Johnston again heads it across the penalty area, and Belgium are able to get it away. But that looked to me as though Dendonka caught him in the box. 
I thought and he, he went sprawling. I thought he took his legs just on the edge of the box. Well, it looked like that to me. The referee didn't even didn't even look at it, and, and the players haven't haven't made a great no, deal of it. So we'll, we'll watch that again out of interest uh, with interest when it when it appears. Play still continuing. Estacio plays it up towards the uh, the lively figure of Buchanan, and Buchanan is running at Alderweireld and now he's trying to find a way into the penalty area past Castagna but just over hit it and Fatongan was able to come across and put it out of play on the half way line. Causing havoc, absolutely causing havoc at the moment. Yes they are. Just through, just through energy and, and and getting in behind the ball and not allowing Belgium any time. I mean Buchanan up, up top and David and Hoylett, they're just, there's three up there and they're just sort of rotating it's working well at the moment it's for working them. really well and uh on our little television here in the commentary position they've shown us a replay of the johnston shot but they've not shown a replay of the no. dendonka challenge on johnston so it's gone and uh Estacchio playing the ball forward and canada coming forward again dangerously buchanan back to david david's shot is blocked by the defender alderweireld threw himself in the way of it and took all the pace of it off it and Courtois was able to catch. Decision making in the final third for Canada, that's all it is. They're just, I think what's happening, they're getting into goal scoring situations, but there's a better goal scoring situation and they can't see it. There's other players that are, are flying down the left, flying down the right, and they're just choosing the wrong option. They've had three or four good chances to test Courtois and they haven't done it. You can't keep letting these chances pass you by. The score is Belgium nil, Canada nil, and Dion Dublin. I think we've seen enough football. We know what's going to happen here, don't we? <laughs> it's looking that way. They at the are going to pay dearly for not taking those chances. And here's Batshuayi on the edge of the area, but Miller is able to win it from him for Canada. And now Hutchinson chips it to the left-hand side. And Davis now slipped by Tielemann, so Davis is away, he's left him on the ground. Davis then plays it in field. Hoylett is battling for it with Hazard, and they went shoulder to shoulder, and Hoylett has come out with it, and Hoylett now chips across to the back post, and David off balance can only head it up in the air and wide of the far post. But again, really, really good from Canada. Uh, yeah, not just, not just the nice football they're playing, not just the chances, but the commitment and, and, and the mindset and, the, and their shape is very, very good. Every time the physical battles there, the two number 10s, Hoylett and Hazard going shoulder to shoulder and knocking Hazard over, wanting the ball more. Here's De Bruyne though, receives it from Batshuayi. De Bruyne now on the left wing currently, goes for a high crossfield pass. Batshuayi's underneath this, shoots goalwards, but it's deflected off uh, Miller. And uh, the goalkeeper caught it. The, the assistant has flagged. So he flagged for a goal kick. Anyway, Batshuayi is being helped to his feet, and it is indeed given as a goal kick. Yes, it's a, nil, Canada nil. It's exactly what you were saying, John. It's we know what's going to happen here, and Kevin De Bruyne gets free. A bit of time to pick a pass. He picks the correct pass. Batshuayi pulling away from the defender doesn't quite catch it, but doesn't matter how good you're playing, doesn't matter how well organised you are, if you don't use this time to score a goal, you are very, very vulnerable. Yeah, mark my words, everyone. I'm going to put my <laughs> neck on the line. Go on, then. After last night, boldly <laughs> predicting early on in the game that Robert Lewandowski would score his first goal at the okay. World Cup. <laughs> and sitting there with the microphone... How licking, did that go licking, for you? <laughs> <laughs> licking my lips as he stood over that penalty, thinking, here we are, I'm going to be proved right. You weren't feeling smug, were you? <laughs> <laughs> of course, but I'm going to. Oh, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to learn from my mistake. You're going again. You're going again. You're going again. You're going again. You're going again I'm going to say tonight, Belgium are going to make Canada pay for these missed yeah, chances. No, I can't. Uh, I can't disagree with that. I'm afraid. However, yes, we might be wrong. Yes. So don't go anywhere, everyone. Belgium nil, Canada nil. This match also on BBC One, so you might want to go, go and watch it. But I would, as I say, you can. Listen to us and watch it. Here's Castagna down the right hand side. He won't reach that and uh, pulls it back, but the ball was already over the line and it is a goal kick. So uh, Belgium will drop back into position, but it's been an unconvincing display from, from Belgium so far. I mean, and, and also the other point is when Belgium come forward, 
Canada are leaving them so much space. Yeah, they are. It's, it's, it's because Belgium, uh, they haven't had the ball, but when they do beat that press, when they do beat the energy, then you do have De Bruyne running at your defence and Bitzel and, and Hazard with the ball, and then they're starting to spin back towards their own goal. It's rush defence. It's, it's They've got away with it at the moment. You, you, like I've said, while you have your team in the ascendancy, you have to get yourself on the score sheet. Belgium nil, Canada nil. And every few moments, the uh, attention is drawn to the lights that flash on the top of the stadium. There's like a big metal frame around the roof of the stadium here. And you can see it from miles around. And the stadium's lit up colourfully as well for a night match. But those lights flash on and off all of the time. Feels like driving out here almost on the fringes of the city of Doha. And it's just the, the desert beyond. Belgium lose possession Canada have it back inside their own half uh, Christophe Terreur was also telling me that that Belgium are based on the other coast of Qatar so we're here on the east coast they're over on the west coast so they're actually about an hour and a half's drive away from Doha right across the middle of the country rather than staying here in the uh, in the big city here's Davis he says it's very nice over there as well Davis playing the ball to the right-hand side to Johnston and Johnston now is able to bring it forward and goes for an early ball into the middle but that's headed away by Alderweireld and Belgium should be able to clear they do up to Azard, but Azard runs into Hutchinson and Hutchinson passes it forward to the right-hand side to, to Laria and then it bounces away off Witzel out towards the far side where it is kept in by Carrasco and then Carrasco back to Witzel and Belgium have got it halfway inside their own half we've got less than 10 minutes to go to half time I think that's right yes it is my stopwatch was misbehaving last night with the, <laughs> i was blaming on the desert heat although it's very pleasant in here tonight isn't it's it it's nice it's lovely, temperature isn't it lovely temperature helped by the air conditioning no doubt i'm not thinking that the, I'm, I'm sure the the vest isn't working for you tonight John, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> yes it's, i think you i think you're mixing me with, up with ian dennis <laughs> a lot a lot of people do you know the ball is up towards the halfway line which is flicked on and then uh, Vittoria passes it to Ustakio. It's been really bright, really encouraging this, this display, this first World Cup display for Canada since 1986, when they lost all three of their matches, 1-0 to France, 2-0 to Hungary, 2-0 to the Soviet Union. So lost all three without scoring a goal. Ball on the right-hand side, and it is the Canadians trying to conjure up that first goal. Lariat back to... Ostakio. And Ostakio just uses the outside of his right boot to give it to Johnston. Then back to Ostakio again. And then uh, Hutchinson closer to the penalty area. Back to Johnston on the right hand side. Hutchinson again. Laria. There's a defender fallen over. Tielemans. Laria takes it on into the box. Witzel puts the challenge in. And the ball bounces through for what is a goal kick. The uh, Zambian referee was there less than 10 yards away from it. And this time the players do feel that they've got a case for another penalty. Hutchinson has gone to the referee. The, uh, the supporters, the Canadian fans, do feel that, that yeah, Witzel, he... there was enough from Witzel on that deal. You know, you know what? That's clumsy. That is very, very clumsy. I'm really surprised they haven't looked at that at all. We've got screens where they normally let us know what's going to be happening. Are they looking? Are they not? But that is... Cl Listen, it, not, not, they are looking. They are looking. We've just seen it come up on our screen. I think that will be given as a penalty because it's just clumsy defending. Do you know Bitzel. what, Dion? I I don't think I don't think it should be. You don't? I no, don't. No, no. I don't think it should be. But it's clumsy, and they are given. And there's a they cheer. They are given. Huge cheer from the Canadian supporters because on the screens now in the stadium, hanging high above the goals at each end of the ground, it's saying check possible penalty. And so we are not seeing a restart just yet. Atiba Hutchinson has gone across to the referee again. Also, Stephen Vittoria. It's a long, long look at this. The decision whether whether Axel Witzel has pushed over Laria, and they say no. Personally, I feel that's the right decision. I don't. Think, was, I don't think there was no, enough. It was a tangle of legs. It, he, he didn't. He didn't mean to tackle him. He didn't mean to bring him down. But he brought him down in the box through a tangle of legs. Sloppy defending. Mm. They've already had one penalty, Canada, and Courtois saved it from Davis. Just over five minutes to go to half time. Belgium nil, Canada nil. Uh, later at half time, Kelly Cates 
We'll have more on the earlier matches. Spain's big win, 7-0 against Costa Rica. That is the same group in which Germany were beaten by Japan. As uh, Davis turns and gives the ball for Dostakio and Davis wants it back, continuing his run. His pass into the penalty area is into the path of Alderweireld who comes across to his right and gets his right foot underneath it and clears it out almost on top of Roberto Martinez. He looks good, doesn't he? Davis looks very, very good on that left-hand side. I mean, he was facing his own goal in the, in the left, back, left back spot, facing his own goal in front of the dugout and a full pirouette towards the touchline and just played a lovely one too. Very, very sharp. Yeah, Davis, the 22-year-old, who uh, was a little bit of a doubt for this game, but he's OK. Uh, obviously desperate to play in this match. Such an important player. B brilliant story, which is always worth repeating. Um, born in Ghana, Liberian parents, and was actually born in a Ghanaian refugee camp because it was during the uh, civil war in Liberia. You, you can only imagine what he's gone through as as a human being. And now to reach the, the level in the game that he has, Champions League winner, playing in the World Cup, Canada's first match for 36 years. It's a great story. And uh, Belgium coming forward. Hazard shrugs off this challenge from Estacchio, still going, gives it to Castagna on the right-hand side, and he gives it to his Leicester City teammate, Tielemans, now back towards the, the halfway line to Dendonka, who goes across the back line to Fatongan, and then Witzel back to uh, Alderweireld in the middle. Alderweireld and Fatongan still going, I was talking to Vincent Company earlier this evening about how he felt about that, at 30, 36 he is, and he feels like long retired now, which he had to, of course, because, you know, the, the, all the years and the injuries kept up, caught up on him. But he's sitting watching this for BBC television and they're still going for Tongan <laughs> and Alderweireld. Ball into the back line again and uh, Fatongan gives it across to Alderweireld. They've been tested tonight by Canada though. A long pass from Alderweireld. He's overhit this one, but it was actually the long pass that, that led to... Um, Belgium's best chance of the yeah, match so absolutely, far. but they've been they've been forced to play the long pass. You know, they, they, they haven't wanted to do it. They've been forced because it's very congested. They've tried to play their football. It hasn't worked. So they tried to go long. It hasn't worked. As the ball is played back to the Canadian goalkeeper, rugged looking Milan Boyan, who gets it away on his left foot and Belgium have got it back inside their own half again. Mentioned about how people in Canada will have been feeling watching that penalty hearts and mouths and the disappointment when it was say poor penalty from Alfonso Davis but at the same time can you imagine the reaction there is in Belgium and they, they have been quite critical of the way that the Belgian national team have played you know the nearly men really yeah they are not being able to to win a major tournament I mean if you, if you let them back into this game now if you allow them to have time on the ball and pick a pass they will find a way through one or two one or two times in this game yeah, Canada always now, falling yes, short. Always. Yep. Quarterfinals in the last two Euros. As uh, Canada win the ball back in centre field, but it's sent forward. And Dendonka will return it to Thibaut Courtois. So in the last four, either World Cup or European Championship uh, tournaments, they've gone quarterfinal, quarterfinal, semi-final, quarterfinal. Not able to really capitalize on the great talent that they've had they've had and still have it is de bruyne winning his 95th cap tonight four of the six men who've won 100 caps or more for uh, belgium are on the field in this match tonight four out of the six centurions forward from aldebaro that's that long pass again looking for carrasco it's bounced from Bacuay. brilliant finish left foot Bang! 1-0 Belgium and Michi Batshuayi is dancing in the corner of the stadium here. Belgium have made Canada pay. They didn't take their chances. And Batshuayi has. Belgium won, Canada nil just before half-time. One of the simplest finishes he will ever come across. Michi Batshuayi puts it in the back of the net in between two defenders. Johnston, Victoria switched off, he gets in between them. Half volley, straight ball, straight passes, about 10 yards out, little side foot past the keeper. Meat and drink for Batshuayi, easy, easy. I did say if you don't take your chances, you are in trouble.
came from that Alderweireld pass. Yeah. Not, the, not the first time that that's caused no. problems for the Belgian backline, uh, for the Canadian backline. Clearly something that Roberto Martinez has identified and it's worked. Yeah, and it was... And at the time that ball was being played, Kevin De Bruyne was talking to the manager. He was chatting to his manager, getting instruction. Kevin De Bruyne wasn't in the island of any of the Canadian players. They must be thinking, where is he? Batshuayi straight in, straight ball. Very, very good finish, composed finish. So no Lukaku, he's on the uh, on the injured list. But Batshuayi's come in and Batman, as he likes to style himself, has scored his 27th goal for Belgium. And they are in front, Roberto Martinez's side. Courtois saved the penalty early on in the match. Batshuayi scores near half-time. Five minutes of added time at the end of this first half. That is light by the standards of this World Cup. So another five minutes before uh, the half-time whistle will be blown. Batshuayi and the Belgium supporters inside the stadium will be feeling much better about themselves. The uh, television here is just shown a, a close-up of the those famous big goggly eyes of Pierre Luigi Colina who's in charge of the referees at FIFA and Belgium now looking for a second goal before half time De Bruyne out to Hazard who hits a pass through the middle along the grass but Boyan's able to come out and pick it up it's a really yeah. good finish by Batshuayi wasn't it for the goal just allowed the ball to drop over his shoulder the defender was there yeah. with him Miller came across but just as it bounced up he hit it and steered it with his left foot beyond and across the goalkeeper and into the net as uh, Canada come forward with Davis Davis then passes it into the area now a chance for David who pulls the ball across the six yard box but into the path of Fatongan who was able to clear it away and again story of the night for them story isn't it? of the night story of the night for them getting into really good areas and then just choosing the wrong pass or the execution of that pass isn't there they're still getting white shirts into the box but there's just a feeling now that the more Belgium have the ball, the more they'll take control, the more they'll score. 1-0. So Canada are, uh, are still in it. But, you know, Dion, you'll have been in this position many, many times as a professional when you've been involved in this sort of match. And you get back into the dressing room and you're 1-0 down. But here's Lariat. Lariat across. Oh, chance in the middle for Buchanan on the left foot sliding in edge of the six yard box and he's lifted it over the top of the bar another big chance gone for Canada I think that's Larry just puts it across it's a really good ball by the way it's two yards away from the six yard box he's put it over the bar I don't know how he's put it over the bar Buchanan will look back at this one and he'll say that's just a tap in it's what he's tried to do the ball's come in with pace and then you just let it hit your foot he's tried to strike the ball he's striked it too hard and it's gone over the bar chance after chance they've had they've had the best chances tonight they have one nil belgium lead in this group where morocco and croatia drew nil nil earlier and uh, belgium's next game is against morocco the next matches in this group are in are on sunday uh, canada still coming forward five minutes of added time we've had uh, almost three of them so there's still time davis is off and away from goal scorer Batshuayi and then Davis rather <laughs> runs into Den Donker, there's no free kick for that De Bruyne couldn't find the pass through to Hazard he actually passed it straight into Vittoria so uh, it is Canada again who have it David to the right hand side Larrier is there again Carrasco puts in the challenge that ball's going to run behind for a corner it is next to the, the flag over on the far side so it is a, a late corner in the first half for Canada yeah, I think the uh, the way forward for Canada is getting Davis further forward, get him in the final third, down that left-hand side, let him create havoc. He wants to take players on, but if he gets it wrong in that left-back spot, then he's in trouble. Get him up the pitch a bit more. Davis is going to take the corner. Trots over there and receive, retrieves the ball from in front of the ever-changing electronic sponsors' hoardings and then steps away. And Canada from the set piece just before half time. In comes the delivery over the top of Carrasco. And then Estacchio with a shot on the edge of the area. Hits a defender. And it's cleared away. I don't think they're shouting for a handball this time. Finds its way back to Davis on the right hand side. Davis against Carrasco. Davis beats him one way. Carrasco, though, as he tried to beat him again, managed to get the foot in, took the ball away. And actually, Aidan Hazard now carries it up towards the halfway line and then passes it over the line to De Bruyne. And De Bruyne now in that wave his plays the ball across the penalty area behind Hazard. Canada get it away. De Bruyne though is in there again. 
and then uh, Alistair Johnston is underneath it and volleys it to the halfway line. It's got a very old-fashioned sound, hasn't it, for some reason? <laughs> Alistair Johnston, the Canadian right back. I don't think there are any other Alistairs playing at this World Cup. <laughs> if anybody knows, it'll be you. <laughs> I think that one could, that could be one for um, for Dave O'Brien, Statman Dave, couldn't it? Uh, who's on the uh, football daily, the World Cup daily, as it is uh, every day? How many Alistairs have played at World Cups? I know one who's commentated on a World Cup. Oh, yes. Uh, and there is the half-time whistle. Well, that's been eventful. Belgium are winning 1-0 at half-time. Batshuayi scoring in the 44th minute. Canada should have scored their first World Cup goal. And Alfonso Davis, I'm looking at him now, walking off the field, staring at the ground. Yeah, I can feel his disappointment from here and the responsibility. Remember, he's a young man, 22 years old. He took the responsibility and hit a poor penalty that Courtois saved. But all of the other chances Canada have had, they've come, they've gone, and Belgium are winning beyond Dublin. Belgium to take charge of this game. They haven't, they haven't needed to, to be fair, because Canada have been wasteful in front of goal. And that's the only negative I have on them, to be honest with you. They've been absolutely outstanding for 35 minutes in the first half. Very positive, lots of energy. Final third, need to do better. Belgium just waited and waited and waited. Quality pass, quality finish. But it is still alive. It's not over yet. Half time, Belgium won, Canada nil. It's been really entertaining though, John. And, and Dion, there have been some real moments for Canada. They're way ahead in terms of shots on goal, not necessarily shots on target, but they've had 13 shots compared to Belgium's four, and it just feels like that finesse, that experience of being at major tournaments is just missing in that Belgium side. In the Belgium side or the Canadian side? Oh, sorry, Canada Canadian. side, sorry, in the, yeah, yeah. No, that's okay, but, no, but you're right in everything you say there, Kelly, because they, they've done everything right, they really have. They've, they've won the ball back with pace, They've closed down the Belgium midfield players that can change a game with pace. They haven't had a chance to do anything they've wanted to do for 35 minutes. So they've done everything with pace. And unfortunately, they've tried to finish when they get into those positions with pace. And there's no calm. There's no ice cool number nine that's going to put the ball in the back of the net. Or I haven't seen it as yet. That's what they have to do. Get the ball back with pace and then calm down. They haven't had that calm down moment. Yes, Kelly. Yeah, for Michi Bakshwai to get the goal that's put Belgium up at half time. I mean, John, many people would have been questioning his inclusion in this starting 11. Maybe so. Um, you know, Lukaku is, is injured. As I say, he's got this, this hamstring problem. But, um, but Bakshwai is, has been quite a Roberto Martinez man, hasn't he, in the, in the time that Roberto Martinez has been in charge. And as I say, you know, he, he is in decent goal-scoring form. He's got he's got eight of them for, for Fenerbahce this season, which is where he's playing now. Scored a hat-trick uh, late last month, just before the World Cup. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a judgment call. He's a confident lad, we know that, because we've seen him so much over the years, and he certainly took his goal well. Dion, just looking at, at Canada and from their perspective, Look, they, they might not go on to win this game. Belgium already have the advantage and they also have the experience going into the, the second half. But from what we've seen of Canada over these 45 minutes, they could really be a lot of fun at this tournament. Yes, they, they seem to be enjoying it as well. You know, in the first half an hour, they really enjoyed their football. They played some really good stuff. They look confident on the ball. Davis down the left-hand side looks very, very good. Getting further up the pitch, I think they, they, they could be more chances made or created for Canada, but You've got to stay switched on. You can't just go press, 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 press and leave your defenders fee on fee. Kevin De Bruyne, as we call it, Pat will tell you the same thing. Kevin De Bruyne has cheated slightly. What I mean by that, he hasn't gone back to defend. He's found that little pocket. And when they win it back, he's the man that gets the ball. He's the man that dictates the pace of Belgium's attacks. And, you know, he's got to start taking charge of this game again. Pat Nevin, who's here with me in the studio in Doha, but we'll get his thoughts in just a few minutes time. We'll also be joined by Julien Laron to discuss that first half and look ahead uh, to the game for Wales as well. We'll be back with Dion and with John inside the stadium for the second half of Belgium against Canada very shortly. It's coming up after the BBC News with Richard Foster.
Take the World Cup with you. Qatar 2022. On BBC Sounds. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. Protests are taking place across Scotland after a court ruling that there can't be a second independence referendum without Westminster's approval. Nicola Sturgeon wanted to vote next October, but the Supreme Court ruled she doesn't have the power. The Secretary of State for Scotland, Alistair Jack, has been speaking in the Commons. At this time of unprecedented challenges, the benefits of being part of the United Kingdom have never been more apart, apparent. Never been more apparent. Mr Speaker, the United Kingdom Government is providing the Scottish Government with a record block grant settlement of £41 billion per year over the next three years. The Home Secretary has admitted there have been failures in the way the UK has controlled its borders. Suella Braverman was questioned by MPs over problems at the Migrant Processing Centre in Manston in Kent. She blamed people smugglers and those that they brought across the channel illegally. President Biden's condemned what he calls another senseless act of violence after a mass shooting in Virginia. A Walmart store employee murdered six people before shooting himself. The supermarket chain says the member of staff had worked with them since 2010. The Prime Minister has appointed a top lawyer called Adam Tolley to lead an investigation into bullying complaints against the Deputy Prime Minister Dominic Raab. He's denied any wrongdoing. Adam Tolley specialises in commercial and employment law. A disabled British man's been chosen for astronaut training by Europe's space agency. John McFall, who's 41, had his right leg amputated after a motorbike crash when he was 19. He went on to represent Team GB at the Paralympics. The YouTuber Tom Harris, who uses a wheelchair, says it'll do lots for disability awareness. As someone who's really passionate about the idea of disabled people entering more industries all across, you know, the world and in every different sector, the idea of, you know, a disabled astronaut or a para-astronaut is just such a, a huge accomplishment and a huge step forward for every disabled person. And Waitrose has changed part of its Christmas advert after a backlash from skin cancer patients. The original one featured two farmers comparing their suntans. <laughs> One. We'll get into the rights and the wrongs and the who's and the whatnots later on in the Checker Flag podcast. We'll bring you all the reaction as well to what has been a very entertaining Grand Prix. One. Get analysis and reaction from the expert Five Live Formula One team with the Checkered Flag podcast. It's been an incredible season for the whole team, for myself, something of course I will we'll never forget. One. To have this kind of season, I, I don't think it will come along very often, but uh, I'm definitely uh, enjoying the moment. Listen on BBC Sounds. BBC Five Live. The FIFA World Cup, Qatar 2022, with Kelly Capes. Day four of the 2022 World Cup here in Qatar, and the shocks keep on coming. Into the penalty area, Machado! What a finish! <laughs> oh my word! What a sting in the tail! But what a touch! High ball downfield! Asano killed it dead right footed! And then rifled the ball past Neuer! And Germany now are facing back to back defeats in a World Cup! Spain are in seventh heaven! Morata, can the number seven get the seventh? Yes, he can! Seventh heaven for Spain and for Morata, and that is the cherry on top of the cake that they wanted. Alvaro Morata gets his goal, and what a confident start this is to this World Cup from Spain. Belgium lead Canada by a goal to nil at half time, although Canada have had plenty of opportunities, including a saved penalty, and it was a goalless draw earlier between Croatia and Morocco, also in Group F. And after a goalless draw, and after that goalless draw, Belgium on track to take control. Forward from Aldebaro. That's that long pass again, looking for Carrasco. It's bounced from Batshuayi. Brilliant finish. Left foot. Bang. 1 0 Belgium. And Michi Batshuayi is dancing in the corner of the stadium here. It's been quite a day already. Pat Nevin is alongside me. Julian Laurent joins us from the Ahmad Ben Ali Stadium, having watched the first 45 minutes of Belgium's game against Canada, which they lead by a goal to nil. Earlier, Germany suffered a shock defeat by Japan. Japan came from a goal down to beat the four-time winners by two goals to one. Uh, we will reflect on that very shortly. Uh, just a quick word, though, on that first half, Julian. 
I thought I, I love this Canada team. I have to say, I had high expectations because they've been fantastic in the way they qualify. They, John Herdman, the, the English coach, I think he's doing a great job after doing a great job with the women's side and even with the youth teams. Now with, with this team, the players that they have, I mean, Ustakio, uh, the Porto midfielder, is a superb player. He's only 25 and I'm sure soon he'll be in a, in a much bigger club. Atiba Hutchinson is 39 years old. He's the oldest player in this tournament. He's the only man in his squad who was born the last time Canada in 1986 were in the World Cup. And he's still bossing that midfield. He's bossing Witzel, he's bossing Tillemans. And them two have run the game, but football can be cruel sometimes. And like the boys were saying, just one mistake on that long ball that was not even for Batshuayi. It was, it was clearly target aimed for, for Carrasco. And the penalty missed and the chances that they had. There's a second half to play, but you wonder if that goal psychologically, I think, could be a bit of a blow for Canada. More to come from Julien Laurent and from Pat. More now, though, on Germany's shock defeat by Japan. Here's Ilkay Gundogan at full time. We have uh, no other choice, to be honest, than uh, try to be confident, you know, and uh, play on the best possible level. Because, um, unfortunately, um, because of the result today, that's already our first final. So every game now is going to be a final. I think uh, it could have been better if we would have won today, obviously. Um, the pressure wouldn't be that high, but now, with that result today, we have to win it. I think in general, with the performance, we know there is maybe still a lack, you know, of, 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 of certain things. But when you look just on paper, you know, I think we were quite dominant, you know, and at the end of the day, we had, we had the chances, you know. Um, we had the chances to, to score earlier, the second one, even the third one, to be honest. Um, where the keeper was also doing well, we hit the post, or I think the crossbar once, and uh, I hit the post. So, um, so yeah, um, I don't think we, we played that bad, to be honest. Pat Ilkay Gundogan makes an excellent point, which is that Germany dominated the game. They had plenty of chances. They missed uh, opportunities by the narrowest of margins, and yet. It feels like Japan's performance deserved something from the game. I think by the, the way they played the second half, the Japanese, they, they were a much lighter team side. I mean, I think most people just watch football, and if you've not got a side that you are behind right from the start, you want the side that's trying harder. They want the side that's more energetic, that are alive there, that are not just taking it all for granted. And that was the Japanese side in the second half, and I thought they were brilliant, actually superb. It never stopped. I kept on waiting for them to run out of gas and it never seemed to happen so no, it was brilliant to say that and, and of course Gundogan has to kind of say that to some degree but I don't think it's that amazing that the result ended up the way it was purely by the way the game was played and it is a shock but can I suggest this to you here are the, the, the last games they've played in competitions the Germans and Russia lost to Mexico lost to South Korea they won against Sweden 95 minute 95th minute winner Euros lost to France, won Portugal, drew Hungary, lost England, this time lost Japan. That's play date. They've only won two. Uh, as soon it ain't going to be a shock anymore if they keep on playing like this at major championships. And maybe it wasn't a shock in terms of, as you say, the form coming into this one, but that scoreline of Germany 1, Japan 2 will still send shockwaves through this World Cup, especially because Germany haven't lost a World Cup game in which they led at half-time since 1978 in Argentina when they were 3-2 up or 3-2 down rather, uh, sorry, they were 3-2 up against Austria and they went unbeaten in their previous 21 matches like that before today. Spain though go on and make a 7-0 winning performance against Costa Rica and they were just extraordinary and I know Costa Rica didn't put up much opposition but it's still a game in which Spain, who've got a record of such narrow wins in, in these competitions uh, that have a, a, a real chance, well, at least they look that way, of going on and being some, some way successful in this, in this one, competition. One, one, one quick line about them, one very simple line about them. I didn't know, when you come out of this tournament, sometimes a team can flourish. And I just didn't know about it. I thought it was a bit too early for the Spanish. The, you've, you're seeing the petals opening now. We're absolutely seeing them opening now, so uh, I think that's exciting for the Spanish. We could get anything from here on in, but you know, the youngsters, they were, they were brilliant today. They were fantastic. It was a brilliant performance from Spain, even regardless of the opposition, with that 7-0 victory for them. Uh, tomorrow there are four games for you as well, including 
one of the favourites. Brazil yet to get their campaign underway. That's across Five Live and BBC Sounds. You've got Rick Edwards on BBC um, um, Five Live Breakfast, rather, from Qatar from six o'clock in the morning. 10 o'clock is Switzerland against Cameroon. One o'clock is Uruguay against South Korea. Portugal take on Ghana at four o'clock. Guess who will be uh, featured heavily ahead of that game? And then Brazil take on Serbia. That one is a seven o'clock kickoff. You will not miss a single commentary here on Five Live Sport, and it'll be covered right across Five Live and on BBC Sounds. The players are getting set to come out of the tunnel for the second half in the game between Belgium and Canada. It's 1-0 to Belgium as things stand and therefore as for the second half, it's Dion Dublin and John Murray. Thank you very much, Kelly. It looks like Belgium are going to make a couple of changes. So even though they scored that goal late in the first half, Roberto Martinez is, is going to make those changes. We'll say thank you very much to Julien Laurent, who has been up here in our commentary position. We'll hear from Julien again, I'm sure, before too long at this World Cup. But the two changes, Dion, it looks like Carrasco has been taken off from the, uh, the left-hand side, the left wing back. And uh, as a result, instead, Castagna is going to move across to the left and uh, Thomas Munier has made his return and he's got a mask on as well remember the problem with uh, Thomas Munier the Borussia Dortmund man as he is now is that he had a broken cheekbone he broke his cheekbone last month and so was doubtful for this game but Roberto Martinez has uh, has brought him on at half time and the other change in, uh, in central midfield, Tielemans has been taken off at half time, and it's the uh, the young Evertonian uh, Amadou Onana who has come on to replace him. Maybe they just want to get more control of the ball in there, maybe a bit more physical presence in there as well. I mean, I'm looking at uh, Castagna now, he's, he's so much higher up the pitch than he was in the first half. So two changes for Roberto Martinez but his team are winning by one goal to nil but he can't have been happy with uh, what he saw in the first half by a long chalk particularly the way that uh, the Belgium defended conceded the penalty which is a little unfortunate one of those handballs yeah, from, was, a, from a was. powerful shot but uh, might have conceded at least one more penalty and were, were could open on a number of occasions yeah and that's just down to the, the, the hard work of the uh, Canadian players now Belgium are trying to grasp this game, take control of it. They're making the pitch very, very big indeed. Big areas for the Canadian players to run into to try and squeeze now. It's going to be a different game in the second half. That's Dion Dublin with us here at the uh, Ahmed bin Ali Stadium, this two-tier stadium all the way around. Colour colourful red seats, purple hoardings everywhere, the pink World Cup livery and I would have said something in the region of 35,000 or so people inside the stadium so not quite full Belgium leading by one goal to nil Belgium in the red shirts with the black trim black shorts and these sort of black and red socks that have a design on them that makes it look as though their feet are on fire the sort of flames <laughs> licking up from from their boots I noticed and Canada in the all-white kit with the red trim they've just won a uh, just uh, won a free kick inside their own half, Batshuayi. So uh, Canada with uh, the free kick and the teams. Now Courtois in goal for Belgium, the penalty saver in the first half. Dendonka, Alderweireld and Fatongen are the three central defenders. Now Thomas Meunier, the right wing back. Castagna's moved across to be the left wing back. Onana and Witzel in the middle. Then De Bruyne, Azard and goal scorer Batshuayi. Canada coming forward with Buchanan, who's, who's uh, really been one of the the brightest players for this Canadian team holds off the challenge from Castagna plays it back centrally lovely from Ustakayo plays it into the area found the header goes wide from David 10 yards out snatched at it really with his head it was coming over his shoulder and he nodded it down and it bounced wide it's a lovely ball as well isn't it should really score he's 8 yards out it's not a bad header at all I think he gets a gets a nutmegs I think on a Kevin De Bruyne, that'll go down in his history books. <laughs> that was Ostakia. Yeah. Well, that that's uh, <laughs> that is definitely one to. He'll be clipping that one up, won't he? Or his friends and family will be for the old social media. And uh, Belgian playing for Tongan has just gone down onto one knee. 
and now climbs up and he's he seems okay and uh, Castagna is just looking at him there to see if he's all right but he is so the throwing is going to be taken yeah great moment for uh, Stefan Ustakio who Julian was talking about wasn't he at half time the Canadian number seven who plays for Porto started all of their group matches in the Champions League this season and they ended up winning the group they'll play Inter in the in the last 16 and here come Belgium though one nil up Bacuay, uh, shifting from foot to foot a little shimmy from him as well against Laria and then passes the ball back into his own half and then a little tangle as well I noticed between Laria and Bacuay off the ball just pushing one another away with their arms and then uh, back the ball goes into the middle of the Belgian defence four minutes played in the second half and uh, Hazard allows the ball to bounce through but it doesn't reach Bacuay and that's a lovely turn from David away from the newly arrived Anana and now he has Alfonso Davis and Davis plays it square to Estacchio but it just ran away from him he's on his right foot though and he goes for goal from the angle but pulls it well wide across the face of goal there were two men in there Buchanan and uh, and David but it was whipped across them and wider the far yeah place. he was never comfortable at all he's 22 yards out 23 yards out on the angle Estacchio just pulls it Thibaut Courtois just letting that one just run off for a goal kick harmlessly Davis there trying to get into those dangerous areas as well if he can get forward a bit more they might get a little bit of joy he's yeah. the key for them he's the key for Canada the ball being headed back by central defender Vittoria to his goalkeeper I was asking you Dion we never got a chance to get the answer you know the, the to be in a team that does what they did in the first half Canada and then to find themselves 1-0 down to a late goal the effect that that has but here's Junior Hoylett on the left hand side the Reading man plays it back but a little bit short the pass and that meant that Mernier could get in there but Azard won't reach that and it's absolutely walloped forward by Vittoria who lands it in amongst the Canadian supporters over on the far side and they're absolutely loving that they love that don't they in North American sport oh, when yes. the ball goes into the crowd it's like the <laughs> it's the event of the night isn't yes it? they the have a, a bit of a juggle crowd. with it they'll hold yes. on to it for a little while as well but in, the, in answer to your question Johnny it can be kind of demoralizing when you played so well and then you find yourself down at half time and you've dominated the first half for 35 minutes but it's just all about putting the ball in the back of the net oh, ball played back to Courtois he's got to be quick now that was hit with some pace by Castagna and Courtois had to get that under control and Buchanan wasn't far away from him but he did he managed to get it down get it away and uh, Belgium have got it inside their own half Witzel's going to give him another test with a back pass which he pulls onto his left foot and then passes out towards the the left hand side good from Castagna to Kevin De Bruyne a little bit deeper as Dion said in the first half you, we didn't see much of Kevin De Bruyne back inside his own half I assume that is on orders from the manager from Roberto Martinez the former FA Cup winning manager with Wigan Athletic Onana now to the right hand side Amadou Onana the, uh, the new signing for Everton at the start of this season from Lille, very highly thought of. 21 years old, now here he is playing in a World Cup. And uh, Azard is inside his own half, halfway inside his own half and passing the ball back to Fertongen. Forward from Alderweireld, Alderweireld whose pass led to the Batshuayi goal. And now Eden Hazard has got space, plays the ball infield. De Bruyne is there, square from him, into Onana. Onana, right-footed ball, oh, overhits it. What an opening that was for Onana, who had space again. Belgium there. Onana in, in the kind of position that, I'm, I'm tempted to say, we just wouldn't see that in the Premier League. No, yeah, the, absolutely not. The number not. of times Belgium have been given time and space and, and haven't taken advantage of no, it. No, it's just that long ball again. It's 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 having so many options and, and choosing the wrong one every single time. They should really be making uh, better use of those chances that they have. But they've got the goal they need at the moment. But it could be two, it could be three. It is only one though. And uh, it's been a collision there in centre field. And that's going to be a yellow card for Mounier from the, the Zambian referee, Yanni Sikazwe says uh, that was an illegal challenge whether I mean yeah, I guess he he must have seen an arm a flailing arm from Mernier yes he did on Junior Hoylett he caught him with his forearm and uh, and Mernier who himself last month fractured his cheekbone from an aerial challenge has caught Hoylett who is okay I'm pleased to say but it's a yellow card yeah, for Mernier even though it was clumsy 
very very clumsy but it's probably a subconscious thing there thinking I've got to protect myself not a failing elbow at all but just caught him so Mernier is yellow carded it's his 60th cap tonight Thomas Mernier so free kick then as a result for Canada forward and left of the center circle Belgium holding a very high line just waiting for the delivery from Ustakio he just waits and waits and now he comes up and he plays the free kick over the back line but he's put too much on that and that's why and that's why Alderweireld old is saying get out he's saying to his teammates there there was nine nine of them in a line red shirts nine and don't go anywhere he's got his arms out by his side like he's an aeroplane he's saying this is the line stay here and that's that forces the goalkeeper to have lots and lots of space and uh Dendonka has got to be careful here. David is uh, putting a challenge in on him next to the dead ball line that was playing out from the back goes wrong again and it's resulted in a Canadian corner. Yeah, that's really good play. Really good play that is forcing Belgium into another mistake. You see, this could be dangerous. Outswinging corner from the left hand side for Canada. It is. So it'll, uh, we'll see once again. Kamal Miller just arriving in the penalty area. He's uh, he's the sort of guy who could really have a presence in the opposing penalty area. Miller, very strongly built. Oh, the uh, the corner is taken short and they lose it. The belly got it into the penalty area, and Belgium were able to nip in and clear it away downfield. In fact, it was De Bruyne it was who was able to to get in there and clear it away. That was a waste of waste. opportunity yeah get the ball in the box you've got your center halves up if i was a center half now i'd be screaming get the ball in the box make sure don't waste my time oh lovely from buchanan hooked it over the top of fedongan goes for goal actually from a from the angle at least that's what i assume he was doing maybe it was a cross <laughs> but i think he saw courtois perhaps off his line and went for it but he ballooned it bent it way over the top of the crossbar from yeah. an impossible angle really it's not bad skill at all from buchanan down the right hand side Tongan there, you think he was just trying to head it and took it over his head and got the ball wrong. Uh, John Herdman is going to make a change and uh, another Canadian player has gone down. That's another, uh, it was Anana who was got the ball cold. away and he's booked for that. Anana, they, that coming together as he was carrying the ball away and that is a yellow card for the uh, the other Belgian substitutes. So both of the Belgian subs who came on at half time, Anana and Mernier, have now been yellow carded. Yeah, I think. Uh, I think he's actually, he's been told to come on and just, you know, a bit more physical presence. Not a lot in that, to be honest with you. Just an arm off. Yeah, just a hand off, just a hand off there. May have caught him with the forearm, but uh, nothing at all. Players are on the feet. They yellow got, card, though. He's got a yellow card for that. The uh, the Canadian coach, John Herdman, is going to make a double change now. They'll be his first two changes. Belgium are winning 1-0. This is Five Live and BBC Sounds, wherever you go during the course of this World Cup. I know you'll be busy during the day. These uh, these early kickoffs back at home, 10 o'clock in the morning. You can follow us on your device via BBC Sounds. Here's Azard. I see Kyle Larin of Club Bruges is going to be one of the players coming on for Canada, the centre forward, who is Canada's record scorer. So John Herdman feeling that they're not able to find the net. So he's going to bring on the man who scored more goals for Canada than anyone else. And Ismail Kone is coming on as well. 20 year old midfielder for his taste, first taste of the World Cup. And Junior Hoylett is the first number to go up, the number 10. So Kyle Larin coming on for him and it is Atiba Hutchinson as I I did wonder whether he would last the distance and he's lasted almost an hour the old stager the uh, the oldest player at this World Cup the oldest outfield player at this World Cup the second oldest outfield player ever to play in the World Cup is now getting high fives and low fives and pats on the back from all of his teammates <laughs> brilliant isn't it it's an amazing story just got a little bit leggy didn't he you could see he was getting heavy legged and 39 years old that's not bad i retired at 39 i wasn't playing international football at 39. well when i said to vincent company he said well there's, a, there's someone playing in this match who's older than me <laughs> and uh so those two changes are made and uh, as i say it is Ismail Kone, so the, the 39 year old is replaced by the 20 year old in midfield. And um, it is 
a free kick to Belgium, halfway inside their own half. Great story, Kone as well, at 20. He only made his professional debut in February. And after seven appearances, won his first cap. And now he's playing at the World Cup. That's not bad. And it is Canada, and here he is actually, the, the newly arrived number 15, Kone. Estacchio works it to the left-hand side. And Jonathan David is out there, and he gets the ball down, and he cuts in field on his right foot, but he couldn't find the pass into the area. Still battling for it on the edge of the box, and it loops right across the edge of the penalty area, and Belgium are able to clear it away. In this second half, as we look, Canada in the white are playing from left to right. And here, the ball is played to the left-hand side again. And this time, it's Buchanan who's over there, and he's upended by Mounier, who's already on a yellow card. It is a free kick. I don't think it'll be any more than that, but he has to be careful. Yeah, committed Mounier there. Really did some nice little bit of foot-to-foot -foot skill there. Very, very good play from Buchanan. But you've got to do it more. You've got to do it more. You've got to commit those players that have got a yellow card into challenges. Are they going to be disciplined? Another high line as well. Another high line from Belgium on the uh, edge of the 18-yard line. But now they've got the six-foot-two Kyle Laren in there as well. The silent giant, as they call him. <laughs> He won't be silent if he puts this in the back of the net. Canada still looking for their first goal at a World Cup in their second appearance at the tournament finals. Free kick on the left-hand side. It's the Canadian fans' voices that you can hear in that corner. That's where all of the Wales fans were in this stadium the other night. Here's the free kick from Estacchio. He's put too much on that. Wet, bend it way beyond the far post and it's all the way through. And another set-piece disappointment for Canada. Yeah, that's, that's poor from... Estacchio on the left-hand side trying to curl it in towards the keeper but put it into that area where all the white shirt don't try and put too much on it just make sure it gets in the right area that's the whole idea Belgium 1 Canada 0 and uh, Belgium very nearly again lose the ball playing out from the back however this time they've been able to work it forward to Hazard and Hazard being challenged by Johnston Hazard back to Witzel and Belgium now with the ball in centre field. It's still uncomfortable for Belgium, yeah, this. It is, it is. They, they want the game a little bit slower. They yeah. want it They want it slow, quick, quick, slow. That's how they want it. Canada wants it quick all the time. So they're just trying to slow it down, draw out those white shirts, and then they play their football, Belgium. Uh, and for Tongan under pressure, his clearance is charged down by Davis and uh, the ball is out of play for what is given as a throw and we're going to see the latest Belgian change and uh, and it's Aidan Hazard, the captain, is off so both captains have been substituted and coming on for Belgium it is the Brighton man, Leandro Trossard who, who personally I feel is one of the best players in the Premier League this season every time I see him, he impresses me scored a hat-trick at Anfield this season and here he comes now for his first taste of the World Cup. Leandro Trossard replaces Eden Hazard, who has, what, flitted in and out of the game, Eden Hazard, tonight? Yeah, he, he's, he's wanting to do what he's done for years, but he just hasn't got that lightning pace anymore. Great feet, great balance, but hasn't affected the game as he wanted to. Canada with the ball on the right-hand side. It is played back. Buchanan's onto this, but he gets right underneath the shot, and he has almost landed it in the middle tier of the stadium. In fact, it was caught there by a spectator who was standing right on the back row of the lower tier, and that also was wasteful from Buchanan, who's yeah. been excellent. He has been great. He's been excellent all the way up to that final third that final third that last shot that last pass I mean Buchanan there the ball's ended up on the edge of the D 20 yards out 25 yards out and he wound himself up that much that it's just landed nearly in that second tier just take your time that's what I was saying to Kelly at half time if they could calm down with their finishing they might have a more of a chance in this game I thought you were going to say you're telling Kelly to calm down oh no nobody, no, nobody no. can get Kelly to calm so, down you're joking aren't you <laughs> impossible well Belgium 1, Canada 0 is the score and we've got uh, just over 25 minutes to play. Four more commentaries tomorrow as the final two groups get underway, groups G and H. So uh, 
Tomorrow night, this time, if you're listening to Five Live, you will be listening to Brazil against Serbia, which I think is an interesting one. But uh, whenever Brazil play at the World Cup, you want to be tuned into it. Belgium with it, with Trossard. And uh, now Mernier, and Mernier's cross is deflected straight behind by the, uh, the defender, by Vittoria for a corner to Roberto Martinez's side. Yeah, Trossard's in such good form in the Premier League, it wouldn't surprise me if he gets himself on the score sheet. Mm. He doesn't panic when he gets in front of goal. Kevin De Bruyne, who is being cheered there, that's the, uh, the area where most of the Belgian supporters are gathered in there, the Red Devils, Les Diables Rouges. And they've got their wigs, and they've got their Belgian flags, and uh, they're watching Kevin De Bruyne take this corner, a deep one to the back post that is headed down by Dendonka, and there might have been a handball in there, and it's a free kick to Canada on the edge of their own penalty area. So uh, Canada will reset themselves again. 1-0 Belgium lead, Batshuayi's goal. Yeah, even though Belgium have started to get a grip of this game and play it at their pace, it's, there's only one goal in this game. Canada still can get something out of this game if they can find a little bit more form than they had than they had in the first half, a bit more confidence. He's still in this game. Here's Onana. Onana in the centre circle. This is powerful stuff from him. Takes it on into the penalty area and then it bounces away from him. He might have been fouled right on the edge of the box by Kone, who went with him. Uh, and he could have gone down, he stumbled, he miscontrolled the ball and it bounced away from him. Yeah, I think, I think he'd actually got away from Kone, but then his touch was bad and it went into the keeper. He lost his balance. He actually did well to stay on his feet there and he could have shot for goal, but his touch was poor. Uh, it might have been a foul on Fertongen. No, it's not given. And so Kyle Laren is able to take it on and pass it back towards the edge of the penalty area. And it's worked square by Davis. And Ostakio is onto this. And Ostakio squared to Davis again, who tried to give him it back, but he gave it straight to Belgium. And it bounced forward to De Bruyne. And De Bruyne's pass to Batshuayi is intercepted by a sliding Kamal Miller, who gets to his feet and celebrates the fact that he put in what was a very important challenge and took the ball away from Batshuayi. So Canada again come forward. Buchanan now on the left-hand side. He, he's very much in a roving sort of role. Buchanan, and then Davis to the right. Johnston. Now it's hit low and well wide, actually, by Laria with a short sort of snapshot from the edge of the area from a slight angle on the right, but wide of the near post by a yard. Yeah, good for Canada, though, because they're getting more uh, of, of Davis on the ball in that sort of central area so he can affect, affect things. I'm very surprised. I think I've seen Kevin De Bruyne misplaced two passes mm. tonight important passes as well Belgium playing the ball out from the back again that's what they want Belgium they want this second goal and here is Kevin De Bruyne who rides two challenges and he's got away from both of them and De Bruyne now square to Batshuayi right foot shot is blocked and a super block that was Laria coming back and throwing himself in front of Batshuayi as he hit the shot and was able to deflect it well wide and behind for a corner. That is brilliant defending, by the way, because Kevin De Bruyne is on the right-hand side. I think it's Trossard that's flying in. He's, he's taken all the defenders away, and Larry has come from 30, 40 yards, sprinted. What a block. Brilliant block. 18 yards out. Saved himself and his team an extra goal. Here's the corner, though, for Belgium from De Bruyne that is uh, headed up in the air and then Canada clear but that's a slip and that means Belgium are back in business with Trosser who overhits the pass to Witzel on the left hand side but Batshuayi is out there as well and now the ball is played centrally on Nana uh, a touch to his right to Mernier De Bruyne is there as well this is 30 yards from the Canadian goal Trossard in a central position and the Brighton man gives it to the Leicester man Castagna and now Batshuayi inside the box he's got to beat two men he's still going inside the penalty area but eventually it gets away from him there were just too many legs in there in the end Canadian legs that is and uh, they were able to scrape it away yeah that defense not uh, not moving on that occasion not getting sucked into the uh, the good play that Belgium are having now in sort of 30 yards in the final third The ball back with Courtois in the goal to our right. Vertonghen back to Courtois. 
and his long clearance to the halfway line is headed in field by Johnston and now Witzel back to Trossard again this is still in the central third of the field and Witzel will play it back into uh, the line of the three central defenders then Donka on the right hand side now Mernier with the black mask on his face Unana uh, turn from him that was uh, clever stuff Witzel then sends it forward to De Bruyne whose pass is over hit again Dion over hit from the great man yeah he's, he's goalkeeper. not quite on it at the moment De Bruyne he's getting more and more of the ball and he, he's going to continue to affect this game in a positive way he's in the middle of the pot right in the center of the pitch he's got Witzel behind him he's got Trossard in front of him he's just left to do what he needs to do he's got the protection all around him so those misplaced passes will become good ones very very soon that's Dion Dublin with us here in Qatar at the World Cup and Belgium with Witzel inside their own half the other thing that'll be happening tomorrow as well as well as four more World Cup commentaries England and Wales will be doing their talking tomorrow ahead of the uh, the second group matches that will be played on Friday so you'll uh, that'll be played on Thursday as the ball bounces forward towards De Bruyne but it bounces away from him Castagna was trying to take it on but Ca Canada have cleared it downfield and then out from the back then Donka comes to put it out of play on the far side they had a chance they had a chance then Canada it broke down for Belgium it was five on five they really should have went with pace chose the right decisions I think it was David there and Larin choosing the wrong options not getting past that first red red shirt another good chance gone here's Buchanan on the left hand side Buchanan moving in field and then uh, a little touch out to the far side by Kyle Larin and then uh, Canada play it that's a misplaced pass actually and Ustakio had to be sharp there otherwise uh, Trossard was onto that but he was he just got there the Porto man and now he's on his feet again but over hits the pass through and uh, Aldevaro can come across and put it out of play Davis takes a quick throw to Ustakio Davis again Alfonso Davis uh, oh he's given it away he's passed the ball to Kevin De Bruyne that could be costly and De Bruyne has got away from Johnston and now Kevin De Bruyne making ground up the left hand side he's gone for the early pass Batshuayi on the far side of the penalty area tried to pull it down but the touch was heavy and it ran away from him out for a throw on the far side yeah the correct ball from Kevin De Bruyne but it was just a poor touch from Batshuayi coming over his left shoulder trying to bring it down on the volley tough tough normally when we see Kevin De Bruyne put those sort of passes across this yes. is not meant to be disrespectful to Batshuayi but you see people like Bernardo Silva yeah, and yeah, Phil Foden yeah. pulling those down yeah. on the ground playing in, playing in a, different, a completely different yeah. way here's Buchanan though running forward for Canada and playing the ball behind Kyle Larin so Belgium were able to get that away again and that's There's happened so, much, so many times isn't it so much positive play from Canada really asking questions and posing problems for Belgium it's so the final pass it's just it's you know it's, it's 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 sometimes a great run but then the player on the balls played the pass where he was stood and it just seems to be falling into the hands of a red shirt every single time but they're being incredibly positive still Canada Kone's come on and made a difference Buchanan's really positive as well Larin's really trying to make as many runs as he possibly can they're still in this one and they're, they're very positive with their play Canada again with it in the centre circle Victoria goes for the long pass Laren's come for it but he was watched well watched actually by Dendonka who was able to move across and head it down groans from uh, the Belgian fans inside the ground Batshuayi it doesn't stick with him again so Canada play it forward but Johnston's beaten to it by Castagna Castagna just has to check back and now Trossard turns and then gives it to Kevin De Bruyne just forward of the centre circle and he finds Batshuayi out towards the right hand side now back to Trossard edge of the box on his left foot the tackles go in and the tackle was effective actually in the end from uh, Vittoria who was able to take it away from Trossard long pass downfield for Canada but I think that's asking too much of uh, Laria it is and it's through for a goal kick 1-0 Belgium lead yeah. I, uh, just to just to clarify beginning to lose track of what day of the week it is here it's Wednesday today so tomorrow England and Wales will be doing their talking and then on Friday it will be England against USA and Wales against Iran uh, another change for Canada 
Sam Adakubi has come on to replace Larea, who was playing on the right-hand side of midfield. Now, Adakubi is a left-back, plays in Turkey for High Thai Spore in the Turkish Super League. Uh, so he has gone over there onto the left-hand side. So that is the number three for Canada. John Herdman has certainly switched it up here, hasn't he? In terms of um, it, rather Graham Potter-like, he's been moving his pieces around the various formations that he's deployed here. Uh, D Davis, Alfonso Davis, has had a spell on the right-hand side. He's played at left-back. Now... Adakubi has come on at left back and Davis has gone over into left midfield as Belgium played forward but that'll just bounce through to goalkeeper Boy. He's back in his bench isn't he? He's back in his bench he, he likes his squad, he, he trusts everybody and everybody's getting some bit of time and if he needs to bring off some of the players that have done well from today then he knows he looks over his shoulder and he thinks yeah I, I trust my bench 1-0 Belgium lead so this match is still in the balance and it's, it's a performance this, I've seen enough tournament football and seeing teams play their opening matches to know that this is a this is a performance that will receive some criticism in Belgium I'm, I'm absolutely certain of that unless they've run away with it in the last 15 minutes or whatever but Canada have posed them problems and I think it's going to be very interesting to see what happens to Canada from this point on their matches against Croatia and Morocco ball on the left hand side but that's an easy one for Belgium to deal with and Courtois places it away from the back 15 minutes or thereabouts to go plus added time that might be another 15 minutes Belgium <laughs> left footed ball forward to the halfway line but Miller heads that forward and now Adakubi it is getting his first touches of the match Londoner Adakubi incidentally did have a spell at Brighton on loan he's played in Norway now he's playing in the World Cup and now we're watching Buchanan on the right-hand side again. And Buchanan plays it across. Larin! The ball got away from him at the crucial moment. And Alderweireld was able to step in and clear it away. Buchanan sat down. He might have a problem. He's certainly hoping not. He's trying to get to his feet. It's cramped, John. It's just cramped. Ah, that's OK, then. Stacchio. Right-footed pass right across the field to the left-hand side here. And then back it goes into central, into the centre circle to the chiselled beard of Vittoria. Slip from uh, Kone, but he's able to get up and play it back. And the ball is worked over towards the left-hand side. They're, they're going to make another couple of changes, one apiece for uh, Canada. Jonathan Osorio is going to come onto the field. He's Colombian heritage they are a, they are an exceptionally diverse bunch as well <laughs> this Canadian squad there are uh, you know there's heritage there from all over the world there's a long pass is played forward towards the the left hand side for Canada that is Davis who is over there again Adakubi hits a high ball to Larrier on the edge of the penalty area and now the shot on the turn from David that hit a body in there they're shouting hopefully in the crowd in amongst all of those maple leaves on the far side for a possible penalty but nothing doing certainly for that one uh, Buchanan who's shaken off his his little bout of cramp he crosses from the right and Belgium cleared away on the edge of the box had a Kubi again on the left hand side with the turquoise boots now Pistacchio, who's been very influential in the midfield in this match, the number seven. Vittoria, the central defender, right footed pass from him out to the far side. And a jump, and Mernier gets there first and heads it out of play away from Adakubi, throwing to Canada. And we will see these changes now. So Jonathan Osorio coming on for uh, Canada. But first, it is going to be Luis Openda coming on to replace Batshuayi who um, I think has labelled labor a little bit in the second half. Yeah, he's so got lazy. The young forward, Appenda, who actually scored in that warm-up match against Egypt last week. The Lons striker, 22 years old. He's going to replace the goal scorer, Batshuayi. Yeah, Batshuayi just got a little bit lazy in the latter stages. He's going to be a bit leggy, of course. He has took his goal brilliantly. Yes, he did, but... I think the players in and around have got a bit frustrated. He started to flick things and not hold it in and put his team under pressure so get him off get him fresh legs again bit of a rest and getting ready for the next game so Appenda is on no Lukaku if you're wondering by the way he's, he's had a hamstring problem 
And so Roberto Martinez taking no chances with him with uh, the World Cup, most of the World Cup still ahead of us. But uh, Appenda is on up front and the ball bounces off him by a distance actually, but he's able to, to chase after it. And, uh, and Belgium move forward again with the ball to the left-hand side. Castagna to Trossard who tried to give him it back, but Buchanan is there and Buchanan's being manhandled by Castagna. And that is a clear free kick. Didn't like that, did he, he Buchanan? Did hey, a bit of physical contact. He's still trying to jog off that cramp, by the way. It's so painful. When you get bout of cramp in one area, it's really hard to get rid of. If you're on your way home tonight, this match is live on BBC television. Incidentally, you might be able to see the last knockings of it. You might see Canada's first goal at a World Cup if they're able to find a way through. At the moment, I mean, they had a chance early on in the match. What a chance as well. The penalty that they had, Alfonso Davis having it saved by Courtois. That was way back in the 11th minute. And now 1-0 down, how they will rue that if this is the final score. But it's not over yet, and Johnston crosses, and there's the header from Larin that is saved by Courtois to his right, and actually caught by him as well. It's a great cross as well from Johnston, he's way out, he's, he's about five yards further out than the 18-yard box, and he just crosses it, he doesn't even look, just whips it into that area, just couldn't get enough on the header, Larin. Really difficult header. But Courtois dealt with it like the top-class goalkeeper he is. When he's been called on tonight, Courtois again has done his job. That performance, I don't think I'll ever forget that goalkeeper and performance in the Champions League final last season from him, man of the match. And that's it for Buchanan. Well, he's done well tonight. Tays Jean Buchanan. And, uh, and also coming off is... Ostakio. So two of the star men have been taken off by John Herdman for the last 15 minutes. Yeah, he's uh, probably resting them, I would imagine. He has Laren on the right hand side. Laren for Canada. Now Davis. And Davis hits a low ball into the area. Poor contact though from Davis. Easily cleared away. And then there's a, a collision cross out on Davis. And that's a yellow card for, for that challenge. Just stretching into it. A little clumsy from Alfonso Davis. Yellow card. Yeah, I think he just caught Trossard high on the knee there, un un unintentional, to be honest with you, but uh, referee's on the on the spot, Trossard's still down, maybe a painful one, yeah, just catches him on the ankle, I think it was, actually. Uh, He's been good tonight, I've, I've, I've enjoyed watching him play, Davies, very uh, talented young man, plays down the left, plays down the middle, play anywhere. Uh, Liam Miller has come on for Canada, and also, as we said, Jonathan Osorio, so Liam Miller, the former Liverpool youngster, who will also played on loan for Kilmarnock and Charlton just the one appearance for, for Liverpool in the FA Cup that tie against Shrewsbury a couple of years ago so Liam Miller the number 23 is uh, on playing on the uh, on the left hand side there he is now over over on that flank of the field and actually concedes a free kick uh, that's his first contribution to the game now playing his football for Basel by the way in Switzerland so a free kick to Belgium over there on the far side of the field. I think one or two have been he have headed off. As I say, we're a good half hour's drive away from central Doha, where we're sitting here inside the stadium. Davis now bringing the ball in field. He's away from Witzel, plays it to the edge of the area. He went down looking for the return, uh, but he's back up on his feet again. And now uh, Canada with the ball on the edge of the penalty area. Osorio it is into the action for the first time, but plays it forward and there's nobody there in a white shirt for Canada. The line of uh, Belgian defenders are able to clear it away. Miller now takes it up for Canada again. Miller slips it into the box. It might bounce for Canada, but it doesn't. It is cleared away. Just inside the penalty area by Alderweireld. Canada come again. They are certainly not giving this up, as you would expect they wouldn't. 1-0 down. But in fact, it is a Penda who's able to carry the ball away downfield. And Alistair Johnston puts in the challenge, which receives a yellow card. He was nearly away, Appenda, and, and Johnston just brought him down. Yeah, I think Appenda was away. A bit of a tussle for five yards, the two of them. And yes, he's uh, he's at to lunge, Johnston. He's just getting out four. He's getting out muscled, and he's, he's at to bring Appenda down there with a bit of a scissor tackle from behind. Because I think he was looking to take on the last defender as well. So, yeah, you can see that one. So, it's a free kick. And actually, the uh, defender has stayed down there and is 
is actually receiving treatment. So the, physics, the uh, physios are there, the medical people just making sure that everything's okay with Osorio, with the uh, appender. Certainly Roberto Martinez wouldn't want an injury to, to appender. We're just saying it again. Dion, it was a bit yeah, of a it was a bit of a reckless challenge. It, it, yeah, it's it? very reckless. Yeah, it's not it's, a good it's, one. It's, it's, it's a definite lunge. At the point, it's, he, he is low with his feet. Yes, he's low with his feet, mm. and uh, I think uh, Appenders in the air as well. So none of his studs or feet are in the ground. So he's up in the air. So which is good. It's quite a relief, wasn't it? On that, Absolutely. Was on, for that, for him there, and yes. also it was a similar sort of challenge to the one that was put in on Harry Kane the other night, which led to the concern. Yeah, clumsy. I have to say, we, we got wind of that very late last night, and um, that very much put a bit of a dampener on things. But it, it seems, the, certainly the, the talk today, the reports today, are that, are that Harry Kane was involved with training for England down at Al Wakra. So we'll learn more about that. I'm talking to Gareth Southgate tomorrow afternoon there, so uh, we'll get chapter and verse and see how things are exactly. So listen out for that on Five Live. Free kick though, that is played in by De Bruyne, but headed up and over the top of the crossbar by Dendonka on the edge of the six yard box. Yeah, good chat. Just, just reaching, just couldn't get high enough, couldn't get over it. Always, always going over. Another great ball in there from Kevin De Bruyne. So uh, we have five minutes, just over five minutes to play, plus at a time. Belgium still leading Canada by one goal to nil. And here's Kevin De Bruyne, turns again and sets off on a run, a direct run to the edge of the D and goes for goal, but got right underneath the shot and uh, lofted it high over the angle of post and bar into the crowd. And, and Canada have got the ball back very quickly and are already off downfield, having taken a very quick goal kick. And um, in centre field, Kone turns, didn't have too many options, so the momentum of that has been somewhat slowed. Adakubi, though, is able to get it down. Osorio now. Osorio back to Adakubi. Time beginning to run out for Canada. Oh, and that's a good looking cross, though, but Larin in the middle. It was slightly behind him. He had to readjust and just ended up off balance, ballooning it high over the top. Well, I, I don't know I don't know whether to say they've been unlucky or the quality's not been there. I mean, some of the the chances that they've had in the final third, that was a difficult one, actually, for Larry. The ball was slightly too high for him. He couldn't get it down. He couldn't get over it. But they've just got themselves into some really good positions. They've played well tonight. They really have. They just need to work on that. That's Dion Dublin, this is Five Live and BBC Sounds. Be all up and running again at breakfast tomorrow morning with Rick Edwards, who's here with us in Qatar. So from six o'clock, Five Live breakfast at the World Cup. Uh, I don't know if the Bauble Challenge will be back in operation tomorrow. Have you done that yet, Dion? Or have you managed to successfully avoid it? I think I've avoided that. Have you? Challenge. Well done. Yes, I'm hoping to do the same myself. <laughs> Castagna heading it forward towards De Bruyne. And De Bruyne now finds the ball to the edge of the area to Trossard. And Trossard now takes it towards the dead ball line and overruns it in the end. And it is a goal kick, and it comes to nothing. Yeah. Not clicking for Belgium. Not at the moment, it's not. Not at the moment. They, they, they've created some good half chances, but Canada have stood firm. They've worked really hard. A lot of cramp out there now for the Canadian players. They've worked so hard. At the moment, this falls into the category of unconvincing opening victory yes. for Belgium. Yeah, yeah, I, I would say so. I, I would say that because I, I really want to say that they've managed the game well, but they haven't been in total control of this game in order to to call it good game management of just getting over the line in my opinion yes reaching into the the book of cliched stereotypes it's also going to be a plucky opening defeat for canada or is it as the ball bounces into the penalty area and laren was almost in but it just got away from him again <laughs> at the crucial moment and across came Jan Vertonghen to plant oh. it out of play. Yeah, just there, all three of them were there. Davis was there, Lavin was there, David was there as well. The three of them, little over, ricocheted off a few defenders' legs and landed to a Belgium player yet again. Yeah, the silent giants being, being too silent. They, uh, they want him to turn up the volume, but they've lost possession, Osorio, and so Belgium, long, long crossfield pass, which is headed back and down by David 
And now Davis takes it on through the middle. Alfonso Davis, I've, I've lost count now of the number of different positions <laughs> Alfonso Davis has played in. You know, he's, he's the heartbeat of this team. He holds off Witzel and he plays it to Miller on the left-hand side and Miller with a right-footed cross and that's headed away though by Alderweireld in the middle. And Canada have to start again on the halfway line. I think they're going to run out of time. We're in the 88th minute. There's one more chance, John. There's one more chance. Let's see. Here is Adakubi taking it on towards the dead ball line and winning a corner. It's a corner for Canada and it's at that end. And those Canadian Maple Leaf flags are being waved again. I know there are people down there dressed as Mounties as well. Of course there are. There had to be. <laughs> And it's a corner that will be played in from the left-hand side for Canada. This could be the final chance, who knows? In it goes, oh, it's wasted. It is utterly wasted. It's ballooned across from the left-hand side over everyone inside the box, oh. whether they were in red or white, and it's a goal kick. That's where you need a little bit of care and you just make sure the ball ends up in the heart of that Belgium penalty area and he just puts too much on it. Harmlessly goes out for a goal kick what a waste that is so looking down there to see the uh, the fourth official the Japanese fourth official can't see the board yet but the 90 minutes are almost up Belgium leading Canada by one goal to nil as uh, Belgium actually come forward with Mernier just outside the area on his right foot curled a shot with the outside of his boot it hit Vittoria who was falling over at the time and bounces away wide and it is five minutes of added time. Belgium have got five minutes before they can record yet another opening win at a World Cup. But actually, this would equal the World Cup record of eight consecutive World Cup group wins if they're able to uh, to see it out. And at the moment, they've got a corner, so they're down the uh, the right end of the field to do just that. Kevin De Bruyne are over there, just uh, lifts the ball up with the top of his foot, then puts it back in the quadrant. Trossard makes a run over there. Belgium looking to take this short, which they do. And De Bruyne then receives it back and he's into the area and he shoots, I think, from a very tight angle, but straight at goalkeeper Boyan, who's able to go down quite easily and hold it and then overarms it out here to the, to the right-hand side, to Adakubi, the left-back, who's appearing now on the right wing. Now in centre field, Johnston plays it to Osorio. Osorio just drifts away, keeps possession. Still going Osorio. Little pass forward to Kone. Kone now to Alastair Johnson on the right-hand side. He puts his foot on the ball, actually, and Johnston crosses, and it's deflected, and Larin gets a header on it, but he was impeded by Dendonka, who was in his way, and he headed it actually into the defender, looped up in the air, and Courtois was able to make the catch. Yes, one of those catches that they hold it for a couple of seconds, and they fall on their elbows. Kill a bit of time. Belgium, I think, will want this game done and dusted ASAP. They know they can play better than this. Yeah, this this has not done anything to... I mean, Vincent Company, when I spoke to him earlier, described Belgium in terms of contenders to win this. He said they're one of the outsiders, Belgium. And they've done nothing tonight to dispel that. They will have to get better. But, of course, in a tournament, you can grow into a tournament. And sometimes... Yeah. A disappointing start is not the worst thing if you actually win the game. But here's Miller into the penalty area, but his ball across is poor, really. Easily cleared away by Mernier. And now Trossard has some space on the left-hand side. Trossard runs just in front of where his manager, Roberto Martinez, is standing there. And then passes it back to De Bruyne. And here's Witzel centrally. Witzel back to Anana in the centre circle and the Everton man exchanges passes with the, the Aston Villa man, then Donka, and then here are the two old Tottenham boys, Alderweireld and Vertonghen, with it on the edge of the penalty area. It, it, I mean, it, if it stays like this, it will be a clean sheet, so they'll, they'll take the positives from that, but it could easily not have been. Yeah, it's the only time in the game where Belgium have had total control right now the last couple of minutes where they've just passed it about, they've kept it, Kevin De Bruyne is in charge and he's pointing, he's telling everybody where to go. But they haven't had it easy tonight, Belgium, not at all. They've had to work really hard to get their goal. We've now had three minutes of the five, and Appenda is onto the ball. 
he's thinking about a shot from 25 yards but he actually in the end came under pressure so played it back and it finds its way to Castagna on the left hand side started as the right wing back second half left wing back De Bruyne that's nice from him on the edge of the box Appenda is then challenged and the ball bounces back to goalkeeper Boyan so Canada need to go direct and they do from the goalkeeper this is a, a long one for Larin to chase but he won't reach that it's through bouncing onto the chest of Courtois who's able to chest it down and now eventually picks it up and then just tosses it almost basketball style to the uh, the left hand side Castagna whips it in field De Bruyne is there he lifts it back to Castagna who passes it forward to Trossard and Trossard is tackled successfully by Kamal Miller who has then gone down and I think that's a bit of cramp as well from the big central defender yeah he's stretching there played well tonight Miller really well in fact they've played well defensively Canada tonight he's stayed down he's just he's out of the Wes Morgans <laughs> Yes, he is. Build, yeah, he is. Defender, Absolutely he? right. Yes, on, he is. And wholehearted big, defender. Big chest. Yeah, big chest, strong, powerful, imposing, worked really hard, powerful runner. Sweat dripping off his brow. Worked really hard tonight. Throw into Belgium. We have 30 seconds of the five minutes to play. So it's got to be now for Canada. It's got to be this move. Goalkeeper catches it from uh, Appendus cross from the left hand side and underarms it out. And now Adakubi. Adakubi to Osorio. Belgium have dropped back. Everyone apart from Appendus has dropped back into position here. And they're allowing Osorio to carry the ball forward. He's got to find a way past all of this red and black. And that is it. The whistle goes. I make that a little short of the five minutes of added time from this referee who is not averse to blowing early. However, that is it that is the final whistle and that is a hard fought opening win for belgium and actually you can tell that from the reaction of their players who look mighty relieved that they've got out of this with three points from their first match and for canada disappointment the missed penalty early in the match the opportunity to score their first goal at the world cup that was not taken by alfonso davis a disappointing penalty that was comfortably saved by courtois down to his right so they are still looking for that first point and first goal at a world cup belgium have won it one nil dion yeah I'm, I'm i'm convinced by them at the moment belgium they were okay tonight they just got over the line yes we know they have the quality just can't get enough oh very clever john just can't get enough that's the song playing in the background if you can't hear it canada very impressed with them worked really hard for 70 70 percent of this game they were in it they 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 created lots of chances they were very unlucky in front of goal i've got to say in regards the ricochets off the shins all fell to a belgium uh, red shirt but when they did have their chances they just snatched at them they didn't have the coolness of mind to hit the target and work Courtois the quality showed they were unlucky Canada Belgium just just deserved it so there we are just the one goal so far in this group Morocco nil Croatia nil uh, in the first match today and now Belgium one Canada nil is the final score here at the Ahmoud bin Ali do you know what you you've both said it John Murray and, and Dion Dublin at the stadium for us this evening you've both said it and it was a a kind of underwhelming 1-0 victory for Belgium this one but for Canada this feels like a, a World Cup that they that they might not qualify from from the group but there's certainly going to be some performances in there that are going to be re really enjoyable they faded a bit towards the end though didn't they yeah but listen they I think Victoria and Johnston and Miller at the back that little sort of three did really well they worked really hard and I think it's down to them defensively that only that Belgium only scored the one it's just I don't know what it is with Belgium they just look a little bit leggy ideas Kevin De Bruyne wasn't on it tonight when he did put a couple of good crosses in I was kind of surprised that he put some good crosses in and yeah just a little bit not not convinced at all I, 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 if they want to really go any further in this they're gonna to have to pick it up a hundred percent because any t any other team they play and they get that much time on the ball like uh, Canada did in the first half they'll score goals against Belgium John Herdman's gathered to uh, together all of his players and the substitutes and all of the staff actually in the centre circle and they've uh, created a ring around him and he's standing in there in the middle the Englishman and he's got his hand in one pocket he's making his point with the other hand he's, he's 
turning around 360 degrees. This is a very public show of, uh, of togetherness, really, from the from the Canadian team, the Canadian squad, and he's and he's clearly he's clearly giving the message that in these coming matches for Canada against Croatia and Morocco, and they've now all turned in tightly together on him. And are, and are still all together in the centre circle in a very tight huddle. Yeah, I think that's great. I really do. I really do. He's basically saying, listen, I, I, I can I can basically tell you what he's saying. He's saying, listen, you guys did well tonight. You're playing against a Belgium side that are one of the outsiders, whoever they are, they've got some of the best in the world. But I am proud of you tonight. Well done. The fans are proud. All the, all the flags are being waved. And the manager's proud. They were unlucky tonight. Very unlucky. Yeah, most of the, the bulk of the, uh, the Canadian fans are still in their positions and, that, and he's now leading his team across there and uh, and he's applauding the, the spectators I mean thousands of them are here I presume they'll have come of course from Canada but probably from all corners of the world here to Qatar and they've all got their Canadian flags the red and white with the maple leaf on and they're uh, and they're enjoying the moment together even though they've they've lost the match